welcome this is Rufamonger, and this is my tips and tricks guide for Potemkin in Guilty Gear Strive. Now this video is almost certainly going to be a very long video so there's timestamps across everything in the video so skip to whatever makes sense for you but that said we're going to cover everything from basic concepts to highly advanced concepts and all points in between. So that all said, as always, we start at the start and let's just have a look at Potemkin's move set. All right, now let's talk special moves and super moves. And let's start at the top here, the move that has Potemkin's name in it, therefore his most important move and the reason you're picking this character, the Potemkin Buster. So this is what we call a command grab. So it's a lot like your regular grab, except a lot better because it does a lot more damage. Uh, I do believe, I'm not cross-referencing it, but I do believe it is the single most damaging non-super move in the game. Against a character with no defensive modifiers, it does 175 points of damage, keeping in mind characters only have 420 points of health. So it does a little under half of your life in damage. At all points of the game, if Potemkin is anywhere close to you, this will be the top thing on your mind, and it will be the top thing on their mind. Once again, I cannot stress this enough. This move is the reason you have picked the character. If for whatever reason you don't care about command grabs, go to somebody else. This is the command grab of the game. Uh, this could be years down the line. There's a million other DLC characters, and I can very well, most likely assure you anyways, that it will remain the command grab of the game. This is Potemkin's whole reason for living, and this is everything you're going for. Simple as that. Now we have Dragon Punch Motion and Heavy Slash, and this is the Heat Knuckle, and this is basically like your dedicated anti-air grab. And if the enemy gets hit, oh, well, they're gonna get exploded on. Now, one thing to note here, and this is a big one compared to how this worked in previous games in the series, is this move is blockable. As you can see here, now it'll do a decent little amount of chip damage, uh, as it being a special move, right? But you can block it versus it being a pure grab like it was in older games. Now there is some tech around that, and we'll cover that later in this video. But uh, all things being equal, it's less desirable, and therefore due to the fact that it is blockable, it is no longer the always go-to anti-air. You got quite a few other options. Mega Fist, this is a double-sided coin here, as we have a forward version, and a backwards version. So it's either quarter circle forward punch or quarter circle back and punch. And here's the big thing. The backwards version of the move is, except for the part where it moves backwards, strictly better. The forward version of the move is what we would call unsafe on block. Now it's a little dependent here. So if uh, you hit from say this far away, eh, it is basically safe on block, don't worry. But if you hit closer, uh, it is negative six, I believe, so people can like jab punish you. It's not gonna be a big punish, but it will be a punish. Now, conversely, the backwards version is advantage on block. So all things being equal, Potemkin recovers before the enemy. So that's great, except for the part, once again, where it moves you backwards instead of forward. And once again, forward is the whole mission of the character because we're all about the grab, right? Uh, but yeah, very big move and frankly, very spammable move. Even if it's unsafe at the wrong distance, eh, you're still gonna wanna do it all the time because uh, the hitbox is pretty jacked up. Potemkin's really safe while doing it. Uh, the consequences of doing it are fairly low except when the enemy is constantly always in the air and that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but yeah, very strong and the backwards version is gonna get its own section later in the video because when we're talking about hitbox being jacked up, oh, I'll just you wait and see. We have slide head, quarter circle forward and slash. Now this move is blockable uh, and it's pretty easy block, right? But the big thing is this, it has a hit of armor and Basically, as long as it's a single hit, because multi-hits will go through it, nothing will stop Potemkin and he'll complete the move. So if you have the character who's on the other side of the screen and they're doing all sorts of long range stuff, be it big normals you can't deal with or fireballs or whatever, this is your way to say, okay, hang on a sec, let's slow the game down, let's get this back in my favor, because the knockdown is a hard knockdown, it's a fixed amount of time, they can only get up in the time they get up, right? There's no way to make it variable or get up faster. And during that time, well, when you have them knocked down, 
Then you can use Hammerfall, which we'll talk about in a second, and we can use that to gain space. But yeah, so this is a good, I just need to gain space or I need you to stop doing what you're doing. Even up close, it's not a bad move because once again, it's armor, it'll take a hit. It does no damage, but when you're directly on top of the opponent, we'll talk about that later too, uh, Potemkin's massively favored in that moment. This is exactly what he's hoping for, right? So be it from far away as a tool to knock him down to get in, or be it up close to stop them from being spammy. Uh, it's also zero on block, meaning if the enemy blocks it, you both recover at the same time. So if it's blocked up close, uh, there's, I'm not going to say no consequence because Potemkin does have some slower buttons compared to other characters, but it's very low consequence if it gets blocked up close as well. So this is a move you will be using a lot. Now, next up, we have Hammerfall. This is a charge move, so we have to hold back for a split second, then hit forward and heavy slash. And the beauty about this move is, yes, it is armored just like Slidehead is. But just like Slidehead, it is only one hit of armor. So if the enemy does a multi-hitting move, the first hit will go through, sure, the rest, uh, you're going to take that one on the chin. So one of the main things at Hammerfall is, yes, you get to charge through people's crap. So if you know, you know they're gonna stick out a button, you can at least take one hit of it and bonk them on the other side. Keep in mind though, this move is not safe on block. Uh, it's not a huge punish, but it will be a punish nevertheless. So beware on that, the enemy can beat you up for doing the block. One of the main, if truly not the main thing people use Hammerfall though, for is not necessarily the attack, but the mobility, because by hitting punch, you can cancel out of the move at any point. And this moves Potemkin forward. And Potemkin, well, he's not a character that can run or air dash, right? So when he's doing this, that is the fastest he's going. So you can use this basically as a way to run towards the enemy and then cancel out of it before you do your unsafe attack. And yes, you do get to still break even if you armor through something. In fact, depending on the move you armor through, that can give you a guaranteed punish and maybe that big old Potemkin buster we love so much, right? Uh, it's not instant. The break uh, has a little recovery, uh, certainly a lot less recovery than the actual attack itself, to be sure. But yeah, so it's an armored charging forward attack, which is all well and good. But it is also Potemkin's primary form of mobility, and that is the big secret of it. Our next special move is FDB, uh, sometimes known as Flick That Back. That is half circle back and slash. And well, he just uh, flicks his finger at you, but considering he's like eight foot six and 2,000 pounds, it's a hell of a finger to flick at you, right? So in and of itself, it's a decent attack. You can use it in a lot of strings and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, safe on block, uh, considering uh, it has a massive amount of pushback on block. But the true purpose is it defeats any and all projectiles. And he flicks it back at you bigger than it was before, right? And uh, this is a big part of his game because Potemkin, he's slow. He doesn't really have a lot of uh, good defense. A lot of his best defense is active defense moves like this, right? Where you have to use the right move for the right situation. And this is the one for any kind of projectile. So no matter what the kind of projectile is, and they come in a lot of shapes and forms in this game, right? As long as you do it, well, you got it. And also, it's pretty forgiving as well. Uh, you can do it really late into it, not too late, like right there. That was like basically a frame one counter hit, but uh, it allows you being a little slow on it. You can also charge the move and just kind of delays it and also makes the move a bit more significant. Now, charging the move is not as advised for getting rid of projectiles as uh, it can fail you sometimes. So when I'm holding it here, you can get smacked. And yeah, as you can see there, counter hit, right? Uh, if you get it on like the first active frames, even if you charge it, it'll always like get the fireball backwards. But uh, there's a little bit of a misconception that always returns the fireball if you charge it, and that is not true. Uh, that is only if you catch it in the first few frames. If you actively are holding it, uh, you can get counter hit. So specifically, just use the regular version for fireballs to send them back. And once again, the explosion's really big and a lot bigger than what the enemy's sending at you, so it's a great way to cover the screen and a great way to defend yourself. And our final special move is the Garuda Impact. This quarter circle back heavy slash. And he has basically just a tank gun built into his arm and he lets loose with a shot with it. Now this is brand new to Guilty Gear Strive and it is one of his, uh, it's an amazing addition to the character. So it causes a bit of a stun state and the enemy is on the fastest possible stun break right now, but it doesn't matter because it lets you naturally combo into the Potemkin Buster. In fact, a lot of combos use this. Uh, check the companion combo guide 
that is linked at the end of this video. You'll see a bunch of examples. It is a million active frames, meaning it's out there for a long time. It is stupendously advantage on block. So Potemkin will go first and he'll go first like by a significant margin if it's blocked. It's uh, one of the cornerstones of his pressure game. We'll talk more about that later in the video. And it's just all around good. Now let's talk super moves. The first one here, half circle back forward and heavy slash. This is the Giganter Kai. And uh, you'll see a lot of people refer to this and I probably will in this video at some point called the Aegis Reflector. Very similar to Yurian's uh, style of move in Street Fighter. And it's a big old shield. And that, it, it lets Potemkin own the screen. Uh, because for the most part, he can safely walk behind this bad boy. And uh, only a few characters have any real recourse around it. Like, yeah, you can try to jump around it and he can air grab you and throw you into it. Uh, and when it comes to things like fireballs, well, not so much as you can see, right? Uh, also has a decent hitbox where he hits, gives you a lot of time to hit confirm into stuff. Uh, it's also a fully strike invincible super, meaning if they're mashing buttons at you and you're pressured, it's a good thing to toss out. However, it's not throw invincible and they can throw you out of it. So keep that in mind. So it's not completely just safe to mash out. You can be thrown out of it. Also, unlike other reversals, it's safe. Like you won't really get punished if they block it, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, so it's pretty safe just uh, unlike other super reversals. They're full invincible. Him, he can be thrown, right? So that's the big thing. But other than that, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And it's one of his very few defensive tools. So you'll be doing this a lot on uh, Wake Up just to get people off of you. You'll be doing a lot when you're feeling pressured. You'll be doing a lot to pressure people because once again, uh, a lot of characters, the inexorable tide of Potemkin is something you really got to watch out for. And... Uh, even if you get hit, it doesn't go away. So like something fun like this, and then you start doing unsafe hammer falls. And if they try to punish it, the shield hits them in the face, and then you punish them back for trying to punish you. So just, it's pretty cool like that. And our final of two super moves is the heavenly Potemkin Buster and Buddy. It's as advertised, because you get a one-way Rocket Express trip to heaven. And then you come back down, and it's the Argentine backbreaker to break all Argentine backbreakers, right? It's a pretty damaging move, as you can see. That's why it's earned a very big cinematic. I'm pretty sure it's the single longest super move animation. I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. And the damage, well, it speaks for itself, right? Uh, so this is specifically to call out jumps. It cannot hit anyone who was grounded. Uh, like they have to be in the air. This is you. This is a hard call out. Like you dare to jump at me. This is me punishing you for trying to jump at me. The hitbox on the move is reduced from previous games. Uh, it's about the hardest to catch people it's ever been, but still the reward is huge. And if you get that call out, oh, there you go. And naturally, if you got the meter, you can combo into it. Although. Uh, if it's anything other than the first few hits in the combo, it will scale very heavily and generally not worth the meter at that point. You probably should just do a Roman cancel. But still, yeah, it's a big boy move for a very, very big boy. Now, before we get to a lot of like specific tricks, gimmicks, all that kind of stuff, let's talk a lot of the basic stuff about Potemkin. One, well, he's really, really, really slow. And that's the way it's gonna be. Because he cannot run, he cannot dash, he cannot air dash. He at least can double jump. So that's something, right? So he has a little bit of air mobility, but he is a mobility limited character. As we went over in the special move section, uh, the best way to move around is hammerfall cancels. Uh, that is the only way you're gonna get any real speed going on. Now also, he has tied for the best back dash in the game. This is one of those things, uh, he has no uppercut style move, no invincible on-demand move, besides Gigantic Kai, which is a super move, right? So that costs meter, and unlike other super reversals, you can be thrown out of it, so it's not perfect. But he has a very invincible backdash tied with Nagori Yuki. Six frames of invulnerability. The first six frames of the backdash are invulnerable. Everyone else, it's not a huge difference. Everyone else is like four or five frames. So it's only one or two frames more, but trust me, It'll take anything you can get in this situation. Now, to make up for a lot of these defensive options, well, he has the most defense. So health is universal in this game. Everyone has the same amount of health, 
but everyone has different defensive modifiers. And Potemkin has the best defensive modifier. So he simply takes less damage than everyone else. Specifically, defensive modifier is 0 0.93. So if he were to take a move that did like exactly 100 points of damage, he would only take 93 damage instead. So this is one of the big things. So Potemkin, you will get hit more than the average character. That is just the facts of life. But you can take those hits better than the average character. So that's kind of how that weighs out. He's blessed with above average normals. We'll talk about those in a moment here. And he's got a lot of good active tools. Like he has a great tool for every situation, but he doesn't have, you know, the catch all uppercut style of move, right? He has one specific move for one specific situation. Like this is anti fireball. This is anti jump. You know, this is another anti jump. This is the I need to gain space move. This is the help me gain space move. Like everything has a specific thing, but no one tool is a catch all. Except for maybe Mega Fist. Mega Fist is definitely a very spammable move. You're going to be using this move a lot. This is the closest thing you get to uh, when you have a hammer, every problem's a nail kind of deal, right? Because you can get away with murder sometimes with this move. I'm not going to lie. But in the end, the whole goal is get close. Do the big move, right? Even his basic throw. Everyone has a universal basic throw, right? Even his basic throw does more damage than other characters' basic throws. So this is a big part of his game. Also, he gets amazing pressure off his basic throw, uh, much better than the Potemkin Buster, and we'll go over that later in the video. But yeah, it's all about the throws in the end. In fact, you're gonna use basic throw a lot anyways because this is fastest move. Because he struggles a little bit with moves because like he has stand punch, which is five frames, which is fast, except it can't hit people who are crouching or doing any kind of crouching attack or a lot of that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, then you have to start relying on other moves, and these moves are slow, right? So, in the end, regular throw being your fastest attack, you're going to use that one a lot. So, long story short, Potemkin, he's big, he's slow, but everything about him is big. He's got very big buttons. He's got the biggest possible command grabs. He's got big uh, counterplay to a lot of big things, you know, with a heat knuckle, flick that back, all that kind of stuff, right? So, that's all well and good, and that's basically the long and short of the character. So, now let's get into a lot of the fun specifics. All right, so now let's talk notable normals here. These are the buttons you're going to be pressing a lot with Potemkin. They're not special moves, but you're going to use them a lot because, you know, it's a big part of his arsenal. Let's start with the basics here. These are kind of the two breadwinners stand slash, stand heavy slash, right? Uh, his range, for the most part, outside of Axel, is unparalleled because, like, Stand Heavy Slash hits you from that far away, right? Other people don't have the ability to hit you from ranges like that. That's absolutely crazy. And Stand Slash also has very good range, as you can see here, and it's very fast for its range as well. I believe it starts up in 12 frames, which is roughly what a lot of other character slashes start up at, except it just has more range. It has a very strong anti-air hitbox. It can catch people in the air as well. And, well, it chains into this, right? This is a two-hit combo. It's not amazing, but it, trust me, it's a combo you're going to be getting a lot and one you're going to be working for a lot because you're going to be winning off the range of your moves a lot of the time with Potemkin. Crouch Sweep as well for him, very good, uh, as the Sweep has a lot of range, as you can see here, and also freely bounces into stuff like Mega Fist, or you can go into Hammerfall Cancel and the Pressure because it is a true hard knockdown. So you will recover way before them and you're in their face. And this is a lot of what you want. So once again here, the range is a big deal. Also characters that have moves that like go under stuff like Eno, Soul, all the kind of stuff. Uh, they can easily go under Stand Slash, Stand Heavy Slash. So this is like your deterrence button against those kind of characters as they will not go under that. And you'll give a nice little counter hit. And fun fact on counter hit, you actually get two Mega Fists. Or if you want to be, you know, a little more sensible, you get a Mega Fist and then Hammerfall cancel and you're in their face. Either way, right? So the benefit for getting the counter hit and stopping those guys is pretty significant. So even though, yeah, you want to go for Potemkin Buster when the mix-up's a thing, right? Stand Dust is uh, pretty good because I'm pretty sure he has like the longest range Stand Dust in the game. And he gets an absolutely ridiculous amount of damage off it, as you can see. So, uh, considering the range 2, it's very safe at the range it pushes them back at if they block. It's not the worst thing if they freeze up a little bit. The only thing is, uh, once again, there's very little reason to crouch block Potemkin, so you gotta make him fear sweep or uh, crouch kick into sweep first before, you know, they start ducking, right? But it's always a good option. 
Close Slash is your best friend. This is uh, the be all end all almost. Uh, it's one of its fastest moves at eight frames. It's plus on block and pretty significantly plus on block. And of course, you know, it chains in the good stuff. Like bare minimum, you'll get like a little combo like that, which is always good. Uh, you can use it as a bit of a fake out because even on hit, let alone on block, right? He's still close enough for another one after the pushback. And then you can do like, you know, am I gonna follow through with extra buttons or I'm gonna command grab you, that kind of stuff. It does indeed chain to uh, sweep as well, if you're looking for that. And like slightly delayed uh, sweep afterwards will also catch people trying to jump if you are going for the uh, command grab gimmick. And basically most of the times, if you're not immediately going for the grabs, this is the button you're gonna be pressing while you're in their face. Cause it's quick, has a decent amount of active frames. It leads to all your combos, leads to all, you know, the big party starter, right? Uh, it's everything you need to be. It's an amazing button. Now off the notable normal section, I do want to talk forward punch. So everyone has a move like this, but I feel just different enough to give it its own section. Uh, specifically, Potemkin's is better than a lot of other characters for the purposes of anti-air attacks and also what it gives you after hit. So in this little diagram here, and this is courtesy of Dust Loop, the hitbox viewer, the little bit at the bottom there you're seeing here, the pit that's in blue, that's the part where you can hit Potemkin. The red part's where Potemkin can hit you. So when it comes to like jumping and all that, you have to have a move that hits so deep to hit Potemkin basically where his legs are, otherwise he's always gonna win out. So in situations where the enemy's attacking you with whatever, this is usually how it's gonna work. You're gonna crush their move, and what it does is it pops them right up. Now you can get a little follow up off it, but it's only a little one. In older versions of the game, older betas, you actually got a full combo. Not so much anymore, but the trade off is this. It's a hard knockdown. So they are basically just directly in front. You just walk in and then the world's your oyster. So we'll get more to it in the uh, Oki sections, the knockdown pressure sections. But uh, this is the big thing. You do this and then well, all, lo all roads lead to Potemkin Buster in the end, right? Uh, but that's the biggest possible reward. But you want to make them scared of that so they do something else. And then we have a lot of follow-ups. We can punish them for trying to jump out with big stuff or sweet combos or whatever. Or Garuda, we'll talk about that more later. But uh, he does have the more dedicated uh, anti-air move here with the uh, Heat Knuckle. But the thing is, it's not a good panic button, right? It's Dragon Punch Motion. It's a little hard to do on demand yeah. sometimes, especially when you're just, you know, feeling the heat from the enemy. But forward and punch is always easy to do. It's uh, much more invincible also than Heat Knuckle as well. So it can beat things where that might actually stuff the Heat Knuckle. And it leaves you with the exact situation you want. Them waking up, low on options, and you in their face. Okay, this next section we're talking Kara cancels. So I made a whole big video about it. So I don't want to repeat myself too much. It'll be linked at the end of this video so you can check that out. But I do want to give you the primer for it at the very least. So Potemkin has this command normal, just forward and kick. Big old shoulder, right? The thing is, any special move he has can cancel the start of this animation. And the start of the animation is when he keeps all the forward momentum Therefore, the special move that you do next, canceling out of the shoulder, keeps all that forward momentum. So say we have the Potemkin Buster, right? That's all she wrote. But if I were to use the Kara technique, all of a sudden I'm doing a moving forward Potemkin Buster with a lot more range than the regular Potemkin Buster has. And this applies to everything. Uh, let's say Mega Fist, right? Completely whiffed. No chance of hitting. But if I do the Kara technique, now it hit, because it gave it all that momentum of the shoulder. And people make this a little more complex than it actually is, because all you have to do is just do the same move you're always doing, no matter what it is. We'll use Mega Fist as our example, right? So just quarter circle forward and punch, that's it. So all you wanna do right before you hit whatever the button that activates the special move is just hit kick first, or specifically forward and kick first. A lot of the moves end in forward anyway, so you don't have to do it. Like Mega Fist ends you know, down, down, forward, forward. So it already ends in forward, so you can just do the motion, hit kick, and then hit punch right afterwards. And you do have to hit punch right afterwards. There's not much room for being slow on this one here if you want to get it correctly. But yeah, you just do whatever move, hit forward and kick, and that's how it comes out. So uh, Potemkin Buster, half circle back, forward, punch. So half circle back, forward, kick, punch. 
And you do it quick. Mm -hmm. Then you get a sliding forward Potemkin Buster. The Mega Fist, quarter circle forward punch. So we do quarter circle forward kick punch. And then we get the additional speed built in from the shoulder. The momentum carries over. Even something like a rude impact, it can slide forward. So this one ends in quarter circle back, heavy slash. So we enter quarter circle back, forward kick, heavy slash. And because the quarter circle back's already in the memory buffer, then it'll keep the uh, input for the special move. But we did the shoulder, cancel it into Garuda Impact. So therefore, we slide forward while doing it. Even side head, like literally everything. Side head is not as drastic as some of the other ones, but you still move forward while doing it. So this is basically how you do it. Check the guide at the end of this video if you want just way more complex notations and all that kind of stuff. One thing to note here is it does change the specifics of some moves. Specifically, Potemkin Buster, it does make the move slower. So the move is normally six frames if you do it raw. I do believe it adds three frames, making it nine frames. Now, if you need the distance anyways, and well, then you take the distance. You need it to get the grab, right? But at point blank distances, the grab would hit anyways. Then don't bother with it, just do the regular version of the grab, as not only is it easier to do the regular version of the grab, it's literally a faster move. So in those extra few frames, the enemy could do anything else. Uh, they could jump out, they could do a reversal, whatever. This removes that possibility. So when you're at the regular range, do the regular version of the move. Only do the Kara version of the move when you actually need the range for it. Also, Kara Mega Fist. So you can do the backwards version of the move, has Kara, and it makes it actually go forward a little bit, right? This is very handy for combos and stuff too, uh, but it changes the frame data. So the backwards version is normally plus on block. The forward version that is Kara is no longer plus on block. They change that from the old betas. So it is negative on block. Now it's safe on block. Unlike the regular forward version, it's not punishable point blank. The Kara version is still safe, although it is still negative. So the enemy will recover before you. That is an intentional design decision that they changed the move for, so just be aware of that. Those are two big specific notes that uh, the Potemkin Buster and the backwards Mega Fist that goes forward with the Kara, the frame data on those are different. Okay, now here's a big one, the Potemkin Buster. I told you a lot of times this is what we're fishing for in the end, right? So what to do when we actually get it? Because uh, you might notice here, it flings you all the way to God's creation on the other end of the screen, right? But him getting not the most mobile guy. Yeah, you can just do, 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 you know, kind of walk towards him. But that's not the best thing to do. So what you want to be doing while you're doing Potemkin Buster, and this is specifically mid-screen, is start holding backwards. Build your charge. And we're going to build our charge because we want to do the hammer fall right afterwards. And then we're going to cancel it to gain some space. So this is much more superior to just walking forward. It gains a space at a much faster rate. Now, before you get, you know, some ideas in your head here, well, I'm just going to do this, right? I'm going to do this, full screen, Potemkin Buster, and do it again, right? Now, this can work against some people don't know what's up. But if you want to go literally full screen and then uh, apply the brakes to Hammerfall, the enemy will recover slightly before you. So what you want to do is go most of the way, not all the way, most of the way. No, a good chunk, like right here, right? So at this point, you're not really negative. Uh, and also Potemkin being Potemkin, you're in good range of challenge with your superior buttons because pretty much everything you has outranges them. So you can still apply the pressure, but don't just do it directly in their face because they will recover before you. Now also naturally, you can do a combo, like a Roman cancel combo. That's a big part of the game, right? There we go. Uh, now, the thing is, it's not amazing for the damage specifically. Uh, it is great for the corner carry because uh, you brought them to the corner as well and you did more damage. But as you can see here, we did uh, 214, and this is admittedly a more basic example. You can eke out a couple more points of damage depending on the setup. Uh, but the thing is, after the move, the damage scaling is very high. Like your next move will pro it'll just poorly scale no matter what you do. And uh, as you can see here, so we only got roughly about 40 more points of damage. So for Potemkin, like, you know, a basic jab does 30. Now that's not nothing. You know, 40 is better than nothing, right? Especially Potemkin, so much your damage comes in these big, like, bursts. So take it when you can get it. But just uh, keep in mind, a lot of the utility is just simply walking them to the corner uh, more than the raw damage itself. Now, in the corner, things get pretty different because this is the optimal situation for you to be in. 
So say we did our Roman Cancel example again. This time the damage, it's going to be a lot more significant. Because we're going to get the wall break, we get more hits in, right? So this point, with the wall break too especially, Potemkin highly benefits from this. Let's say we don't do this, right? We actually get a bit of a follow-up. So we can give like a little love tap here, like, uh, you know, the uh, standing kick. Uh, if your timing is quick, it's a little strict sometimes, you also get a sweep, right? Just a little bit of extra damage. And the beauty of this is this stuff, of course, naturally is special cancelable. So if we do this and say we do a little boot into a uh, Garuda Impact. Now, uh, that move, as we went over earlier in the special move section, Garuda Impact has a lot of active frames, meaning the move is out there for a very, very long time. And doing this forces them to wake up, and it wakes up in basically the last active frame of Garuda Impact. So the enemy here has literally no recourse but to block. Now you might say, well, Roofmonger, what if they do a big old reversal? Well, I'm one step ahead of you on that one, because this specific scenario... Looks like we're a little too far away for that reversal to connect. And uh, that being the case. You're kind of super dead if you try it, right? Uh, so when you're in the corner, no matter what you want to do with Potemkin Buster, it's just so much better than this mid screen. So just keep all that kind of stuff in mind. Now, this one's kind of basic, but super important to Potemkin. Uh, stop me if I'm repeating myself, but you know that Potemkin Buster is kind of important, right? Once again, this is the whole reason we're here. Whole reason we came to the dance. So naturally, you want to improve your chances of getting it, right? And we got a couple gimmicks to show you. This involves our friend, the Roman Cancel. Very important part of Guilty Gear, right? Uh, now, the least of which is simply the Blue RC. This is the Roman Cancel that happens when you're doing nothing else. And this can greatly increase our grab range. So, regular grab. It has very long range for a grab, actually, because it does hit from pretty far away, right? Just pretend can so wide, sometimes it feels like it doesn't. But it truly does. But it doesn't hit from this far away. Now, the Kara Potemkin Buster does hit from that far away. Awesome. But, you know, doesn't hit from that far away. That sucks. Wish we could hit from this far away, but we can't. Or can we? Turns out, my friends, assuredly, yes, we can grab from that far away thanks to the power of the Blue Roman Cancel. So what am I doing here? It's really quite simple. All I'm doing is I'm dashing, then I'm doing my Roman Cancel. I do have the macro set for both these buttons, although you don't have to, but it makes life easier. And I'm just going dash Roman Cancel, right? So it immediately puts us in the sliding forward version of the Blue Roman Cancel, which is awesome. And as we've talked about before in many other videos, uh, hey, you keep momentum from moves, right? This is awesome. That's like the whole point of the Carrot Cancel with the shoulder, right? We keep the forward momentum, and much the same here. If we Potemkin Buster from the Blue version of the Roman Cancel, we keep all that forward momentum, and all of a sudden, hey, we can, keep, we can start, start grabbing from ranges we can't grab from before, right? So when you're walking someone down, this could be the last potential thing they're expecting. Maybe they're just down backing, expecting to block a button or whatever, but this gives you surprise speed you don't have before. Now this is of course predicated on the fact that it is the quick Roman cancel. Uh, check the playlists on the channel. I'll have guides, like a big guide covering all the Roman cancel stuff. So you don't want this whole animation to complete in full. You want to cancel it with the grab animation, right? But this is a big part, and this is a big thing you can do. So that's that, right? And that's pretty well and good. Basically, uh, we have three effective grab ranges. This range, this range is the Carabuster, and this range is Blue Roman Cancel. So now we have way more. But, you know, what if I want to do it from over here? What can I do? Well, that's where our pal, the Hammerfall, comes into play. Because the Hammerfall, like all special moves, you can Roman Cancel it, right? Awesome. So what we want to do is we want to hammer fall across the screen. Maybe we're charging through some nasty fireballs or anything. And we're going to end up with a Roman cancel and pile drive you on the spot. And when you know it, now we have our full screen Potemkin Buster, right? That's amazing. And there's a lot of ways you can mess around with it. Like, uh, say the enemy's blocking and you're just looking for that gimmick, right? Gimmicks are life naturally. And they block this bad boy here, and 
we're just doing like a basic string. Just something like, you know, this, this, something like that, right? And then we can do something like boom, boom, whoop. Gotcha, right? And once again, maybe they're waiting for like a stand heavy slash or something. But whatever they thought was going to happen, it certainly wasn't going to be like, I'm going to get Potemkin Bustard out of the block stun, you know, just the normal chain I was in, right? So that's just a really strong gimmick is it lets you move back forward and then we RC out of it. And then, of course, we cancel RC into the Buster. And then, hey, it's party time for everybody. Now, once again, is Roman Cancel's a wonderful thing, right? And you can Roman Cancel anything. That's the whole point of Roman Cancel. But sometimes you just don't think about certain things you can Roman Cancel. And one of the things you can do is Roman Cancel your special moves, you know, with armor, while they're armoring through a move. And that can really throw people for a loop. So once again here, let's say Kai toss on a base of gold uh, projectile, right? And naturally we want to hammer fall through it. And uh, sometimes in certain ranges, he still gets to block, right? Cause that's life. And you know, if you get the hit, sure, that's cool, I guess. But wouldn't, you know, a Potemkin Buster be a lot more satisfying? And that's exactly what we can offer you. And wouldn't you know it, baby, it's that easy, right? So when you see your armor activate, just Roman cancel through it and then go for your grab. And now I know it doesn't say punish, but uh, let me show you the dummy here because he's indeed set to jump. He's holding up as soon as he's done that fireball. So he cannot jump out of this. This is a guaranteed thing to happen. So we can just do that simply. We see the armor flash, we Roman cancel through it. And then it brings us a way better punish than we were ever gonna get otherwise. And naturally slide head has armor too, right? So if you find yourselves in a situation where you have slide headed uh, someone and the armor triggers, if you immediately Roman cancel out of it, you can grab them. As you can see right there, right? So block string, eh, it turns out didn't work out so good for you, Kai, right? On this specific block string, if you try to hammer fall out of it, like the armor doesn't activate fast enough. The armor on slide head comes out faster than the one on hammer fall. And this is naturally, it is, uh, you know, a super specific situation, but super specific situations are how you win games, right? So anytime you see that armor flash and you know they're still in the animation or whatever move that triggered that armor, just immediately Roman cancel out of it and it's time to go to the big boys club and get your grab on. Okay, let's uh, keep the Roman cancel train going just a little bit longer and let's talk about the Potemkin Buster Roman cancel option select. So basically, if you get your Potemkin Buster, well, you get your Potemkin Buster, don't worry, right? All's well in the world. But if you didn't, well, that can kind of suck and you might get beat up, right? Because, uh, you know, it's got a pretty big whiff animation. They might be jumping on your head with a button or whatever. But let's see if we can uh, avoid that. The trick is really as easy as apple pie. Just do your move and then wait like one split second and then Roman cancel. That's the option select. It's so easy. Why does this work? Well, if you do the move and then you Roman cancel right after, you can't Roman cancel a Potemkin Buster till the end of the move, right? So if you actually get the Potemkin Buster, well, literally nothing happens. That easy, right? Literally nothing happens. And if you were to somehow whiff and therefore in danger, then you immediately Roman cancel out of it. And that can keep you safe from a lot of problems and perhaps still even turn the tables on the enemy. So say I have the enemy in the corner, right? And either the mix is like I can do close slash and say they block the first hit, right? Assume that. And then I can do delay buttons to catch them jumping because after block, by the way, the bot is set to try to jump, right? So if I do delay buttons and they try to jump out, I smack them. That's awesome. But what I really want is I want them to stay still and go for that lovely Potemkin Buster. But what do you know what? This friggin' dummy's jumping. He's ruining my day. I want to grab him and he's jumping like a jerk so I can't do it. And this is where our option select comes into play. So if he did stand still, then once again, whatever. We do our options like nothing comes out. We just get the grab. Awesome. No problems, no problems. We can mash all day. And uh, Roman Castle is not going to come out until we get the uh, move finished and we get our damage in. But if they're a rude boy and they jumped, then, well, we Roman Castle out of it, right? So, and the lovely part is, of course, naturally, they are affected to that time slow effect. So if they try to hit a button or whatever, it's gonna be just glacial. Like whatever they're gonna hit, it's not gonna affect us. And then from that point, oh cool, you jump, bonk. And we smack them down with the air throw or 
We can go for a heat knuckle or whatever, right? Uh, but this is to our benefit because we basically get the best of both worlds. That's what the option select is. If we got the grab, great. No problems. Awesome. But if we didn't get the grab, we're protected from our mistake and we can capitalize on it. So that is the nature of the option select. It's the easiest option select in the world because once again, it's just basically just an extra button press. And if you get what you want, you get it. And if you didn't, then you're safe. You don't have to worry about getting punished. And even better yet, you might punish the enemy for trying to get out of it. All right. So now let's talk backwards Mega Fist again. So we talked about it earlier in the special move section, but not why it's really, really special. Uh, you know, it hits the enemy. That's awesome. Plus on block. Hey, that's, that's, that's amazing. We love it. But the big thing about this move is it's basically... A thing that lets Potemkin sometimes get out of jail in a lot of things, in just a lot of ways he could never normally do. Uh, so if you look at the hitbox here, uh, this is once again provided by Dustloop, thank you very much. Uh, when Potemkin's doing the Mega Fist, uh, basically you can only hit him from like the waist up. So he's actually quite high off the ground, even in the early frames of the moves. His hitbox, or rather his hitbox rather, is very highly elevated from the ground, so it's actually quite difficult to connect with him. And this is where we are going to be using this move specifically. So we have Giovanna here, let's use a common situation here. So her drill kick style move, which is plus on block, and she's going to do something like stand kick to check us, right? So if we dare hit a button, like, we're blown up. And uh, kick in the dog lariat is a natural combo on uh, counter hit, right? So, stand, light punch is our fastest button, and uh, we in no way, shape, or form can beat it. Say I literally hold up. Like, I want you to believe me as hard as you can believe me here. Let's uh, turn on the inputs again here. So, I want you to see as hard as I possibly can. I am going to hold up after blocking this. I can't get out. I cannot get out. I can't jump my way out. There's no way out. I cannot do it. What about backdashing? Backdash. Oh, I get hit anyways because life sucks. That's what happens, right? Life sucks, then you die. So I cannot backdash out of this. I cannot jump out of this. I am screwed. Or am I? This is where we apply a little dose of that backwards mega fist. So here we go. And whoa, we're out of there. Eat crap. Eat crap, Javana. We're out of there, baby. Uh, so yeah. Even though I literally cannot hold up and jump out of this setup, right? I can backwards Mega Fist out of it. Because Potemkin literally is airborne faster in this setup with the Mega Fist than he is on an actual friggin' jump. So jumps won't save me. Backdashes won't save me. But backwards Mega Fist will save me. And God bless the move for it. And if they block in time, whatever, it's plus, right? So it's your turn. Uh, and it's just something to get out of the friggin' corner. Get your breath back, right? So either you steal a turn back if they block, if it hits, it's awesome. If it counter hits, you actually get a little bit of a combo. So this works out in uh, so many situations. So like, hey, look at me, I'm so... I'm gonna do a bunch of plus on block stuff, and then I'm gonna do a little uh, frame trek uh, trap on you with a crouching kick. Just to keep you honest, because if you try to hit buttons or whatever, you're gonna get smacked. And when you know it, Screw your frame trap. I'm out of there. Anything that basically hits like chest level will whiff, even if you have plus frames. Now, it's not foolproof. Once again, I'm talking like hits chest level, right? Anything that hits a little higher, like say Soul's Jab, his punch, that will stop me from doing reversal Mega Fist out of there. So. It is not foolproof, but lordy, 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 does it get you out of a lot. So how about Milia, right? Four and heavy slash. Uh, there's maybe a two frame gap between the first hit and the second hit. And the first hit leaves her airborne, so she can like cancel that in airborne special moves and all sorts of gimmicks, right? That sucks. But the thing is, you don't want to challenge it because, well, it's two frames. Like, you're not beating it. You're not beating it. Technically, you could throw her out of it, but only if you instant block it first. So that's not really going to happen. Uh, if you try to throw her out of it normally, you're going to get counter hit, right? But Potemkin, no. No more. For whatever reason, despite the incredibly small window and the fact that he attacks right on my tail, I can backwards Mega Fist through it. And I can bonk her on the head. 
So that beats the move as it stands. If she tries to do an aerial reset and do an aerial special move, that bonks her on the head as well. Uh, there is so many situations in this game. As long as it's just not a true block string, you can backwards Mega Fist through it. This may be the key to his defense as time goes on. Because once again, blocking sucks. Nobody wants to block. Blocking means you're losing. Ain't nobody want to block. Backdashing. He has maybe the best backdash in the game. Doesn't matter. You still get hit out of stuff all the time when you're in the corner. That sucks. No one wants to do it. But turning the tables while avoiding stuff, that's something everybody wants to do. So backwards Mega Fist may be the key. You got, there, there's a million situations. You're going to have to practice them at home. I'm sorry. I don't have the answer for every possible situation. But keep in mind, just because the hurt box on the uh, backwards Mega Fist is so jacked that he's so high up on the screen so early into the move, he can just get out of stuff you just never can get out of. Once again, he can get out of stuff you can't jump out of, yet with the power of this move, you can jump out of it. So practice these situations at home. Practice every matchup you can think of because this might be the move that saves your life. Now let's talk the basics of 6K, forward and kick. The big old shoulder. So this, like any other normal, right? It's special cancelable. And there's a lot of stuff behind this. There's a lot of mind games behind this. So here's the most basic level. On regular hit, the shoulder and the flick, it's not a combo. It sucks, not a combo. Now, uh, if it was a counter hit, it is a combo. Hooray, right? That's awesome. That works. So if it counter hits, that's great. We'll get more into that later. But here's the thing. It's not a natural combo on hit, and naturally it wouldn't be like airtight on a block. So, you know, the enemy can like try to hit buttons through it. So let's say Kai. He's going to try to jab after it, right? Jab's his fastest move. And we're just going to go shoulder right in the flick. What's going to happen? Bonk! It trades! And boy, howdy, does it trade in our favor. So that is awesome. So that's one of the big things of pressure. And of course, if they just block all the way, flick, it does great on block. If they try to chicken block and jump out, they can block out in time, but still they have to block it. And it does a good amount of chip, good amount of pushback. It's fine if they block. If they block, that's great. In fact, it gets better later on. But if they block, whatever. If they try to challenge it though, they get smacked. That's the beauty of it. So you want to do a lot of shoulders and specifically into special cancels. And just to cut this one off at the pass, yes, Soul, Bad Guy, and Chip have faster than normal normals, and they can defeat it. Sucks. But whatever, they're nerds, and Slidehead beats that crap. So if you know they're going to try to challenge and this specifically Chip or Soul, and they have the very fast button that'll be Flick, well, then you get to do Slidehead immediately, and it'll crush their options, and then you get that beautiful pressure on their wake up. So once they smarten up and stop challenging it, that's when we start going to Garuda Cannon here and just, you know, does a lot of chip damage, very plus on block, sets up grab str and uh, strike mix-ups, all that kind of stuff. So we want them to en just encourage them to be passive, right? Give up till the point where then you stop challenging and then this stuff starts happening, at which point they'll start challenging because, yeah, Jab will beat uh, Garuda because it is slower and then you can start doing Flick again, all that fun stuff. And now I know you're already thinking next level. Well, screw it. What if they do something invincible? Because here's the thing. Forward and Punch has that upper body invincibility, right? And it will truly beat Flick. Uh, and it's much faster than the Garuda, so it's going to beat that real bad. However, Slide Head, haha, caught you, right? So that is another aspect of the move. Uh, if you Slide Head, if, uh, they either have a super fast normal or if you expect them to forward punch throw it, well, then Slide Head beats it easy peasy and you get that knockdown and you get to be in their face. But, you know, what if uh, they don't do that? They do a big old uppercut. That sucks. You can't even slide ahead through the uppercut. We're boned. Or are we? Because, no, one of the things here is, uh, you know, the old uppercut in this game, it ain't throw invincible. It's strike invincible, sure, but it ain't throw invincible. So he went for that uppercut. He he went for it. He's, he's doing it, right? Too bad I just Potemkin busted him through it. So this creates a many layered guessing game, right? Uh, so many layers. Now, layer one basically is shoulder into flip. That's layer one, right? Uh, when they start being passive, then you want to go into Garuda. Uh, when they start fighting back, 
uh, say with invincible stuff. That's where we're gonna put in Potemkin Busters. And by the way, keep in mind, uh, if they are all the way truly passive and they only just block and nothing else, you can just do this into Buster anyways, right? If they're just waiting for the next special move, so that's another layer where they're waiting for the next thing to follow up and then they get Bustered. But it's just basically a many tier little guessing game. And also here before we uh, just end off, just in case it actually connects, which would be awesome and it connects with counter hit, uh, shoulder into Garuda is a natural combo and that naturally combos into Buster and then all of a sudden that's half their life. So shoulder's cool, use the shoulder. And while we're here on the shoulder and counter hits, we do have a little bit of an option select to work with here. Uh, basically on block, you'll get the flick. On hit, like the actual counter hit, you will get the Garuda instead for a much better situation all around. So we're gonna set our thing here to counter hit random. So sometimes it'll counter hit, sometimes it won't. We don't know which one we're gonna do, but our motions will not change. We're gonna go into the shoulder as usual, and then we're gonna enter half circle, and uh, half circle back that is in slash, and that's our flick, and then another quarter circle back, and heavy slash, which is our Garuda. And basically, if we get a regular hit, we will then go right into flick, and uh, or on block as well. But if we specifically get the counter hit on the shoulder, then the time stop will be enough that the Garuda impact will overwrite the flick impact, so we always get the best of the two options. So right there, that was a counter hit, we get Garuda, and from there we can get like Carabuster, or we go like sweep into Mega Fit, whatever you want to do, right? Like, in world's your oyster at that point. That time, there was no counter hit, so the flick comes out as normal, and the Garuda is simply too slow because it doesn't have the time stop from the counter hit for it to come out. And basically, it's always going to be the one you want, right? So it's always going to be the one just a little bit more beneficial. So if you're just always trying to cover your bases, you'll have your bases covered, basically. Uh, quite cut and quite dry. Uh, so that's awesome. Sometimes you'll want to go shoulder and Garuda anyways, and don't bother with this, right? Because you might want that on block anyways. And if you do this, that'll erase it on block. This is specifically for counter hit only. It is just basically meant to give you the biggest possible combo on counter hit. Now, this next section, I'm going to advocate for something that might actually get you killed. <laughs> and that is specifically when you're both air to air and you're both trying to smack each other out of the air. I want you to always go for heavy slash. Heavy slash is not as fast as air to air move. If you want the safety of speed, that is jump jab. Jump jab is as fast as aerial move, and it is not fast, by the way. But it's the fastest Potemkin has, and it comes in at seven frames. So when you're looking to air to air people, well, then there you go, right? You'll get your little elbow. If you're lucky, sometimes you get two, but that's really all you're getting. Now let's take jump heavy slash. Jump heavy slash is slower. It is 12 frames, so it is five frames slower. But the reward is so much more significant than the jump jab, which once again, not that much, right? Uh, that I think it might be always worth the risk to go for. You might get blown up for trying this, right? Those five frames could be all the difference in the world, but man, the reward, in my opinion, out just outweighs the risk. So here is your jump jab reward for successful air to air. Here is jump heavy slash reward for a successful air to air. It's a lot, a lot, a lot more damage to say the least. Even on its most minimal level, you can get like forward heavy slash off the command normal, right? The damage is just so much more supreme than uh, just jump jab. Like, cause when you counter hit someone, it gives you that big slow counter hit, right? And you can just kind of do whatever you want afterwards. A uh, combo like that, or you can get a little crazier too. Uh, just the reward is so much more extreme. Also, the hitbox on Jump Heavy Slash is a lot better as well. Like, it'll actually win more trades air to air than uh, Jump Jab will. The only thing Jump Jab is better at is just the you know, raw speed. So when you're going to air to air people, right? Because sometimes air to air is just a lot safer. Because like when they're flitting around, not committing, you go for Heat Knuckle, like, and you whiff, you look like an idiot. Go for Forward Punch, and they just didn't commit, you look like an idiot. At least jumping at them, you'll force them to block at the minimum, right? 
But yeah, it just in the end, I just advise a small element of risk. Like, yeah, right there. I had the bot set, right? Sometimes you will lose, which sucks. Like, in that situation, Jump Punch would have won. But the reward is just so much more significant that I think it's worth the risk when you go for it. That's my opinion anyways. Now, let's keep the anti-air subject going here. Let's go back to Heat Knuckle. So Heat Knuckle, as we went over earlier, you know, it has a little problem in that you can block it. Yeah, it has a little bit of chip damage, sure, but you can block it nevertheless. But what it does do is this is a guard break, and when you block it, uh, it is Potemkin's turn. He recovers way before you, and there's stuff that can be done with that. So right now the bot is jumping, and he's also holding up immediately after the jump when he lands, right? So if we're trying to be sneaky, sneaky, sneaky here, and like go for the buster, whatever, we didn't get it. But that is part of the mix, because we get to go first, and uh, you uh, can establish that, because while they can hold up, they don't jump immediately after they land, right? So if they're holding up specifically here, oh, we got them with the old uh, crouch kick in the sweep. They're holding up, right? Because uh, they don't get a hit. So that's basically guaranteed. And that's a pretty fun little fact. Even a raw sweep right there. Guaranteed. They can't jump out in time. And of course, you know, once they settle down, once they don't immediately hold up again, well, you know what to do, right? Uh, so that's just one of the little guessing games. So that's layer one. Uh, and there is a very specific angle uh, you can catch them that guarantees Potemkin Buster, uh, but it's almost realistically impossible to hit, so I wouldn't worry about that too much, uh, because it's very frame specific. But let's actually talk about a much more realistic guaranteed situation. So this one, it's a little magical fantasy land in that, yes, this will require 100% of your bar, which, you know, that that's, that's not always feasible, but it's not impossible. This can be real match practical. It's just, it'll be very rare when it happens. So once again here, you gotta block that. And that block is a guard break. So that means you can't like, uh, you know, yellow Roman cancel out of it or whatever. So your defensive options are very limited. Now, here's what it guarantees. So we do this, we do that guard break, and then we're gonna immediately Roman cancel it. And what does that Roman cancel give us with 100% meter? What it gives us with 100% meter, 50% meter left. And what can we do with 50% meter left? Oh yeah, Heavenly Potemkin Buster. So this setup is guaranteed. There's no way out. And that's a chunk of change in damage, right? Because of the fact, specifically the blocked Potemkin, uh, rather blocked Heat Knuckle, is a guard break, it removes the possible defensive options from it. Meaning, well, you've got no choice. If it's Roman canceled, and you don't have to dash with it, it's just force a habit here, but if it's Roman canceled, you're done for. You're, there's no way out, you're done. It's uh, quite hilarious, in fact. So, if you have 100% meter, I guess it's just something to keep in mind, right? Because Heavenly Potemkin Buster, it has the range. It'll get him. And uh, if this doesn't win you the game with 100% meter, well, then you're pretty close to winning the game at that point anyways. Okay, so now here's the big one. Let's talk the basics of Oki. Oki is short for Okazeme, and it is the Japanese concept of pressuring the opponent while they're waking up from being knocked down. We say Okazeme because it's a lot faster than saying pressuring the opponent while they're waking up from being knocked down because it's one word, right? So that's why we use that word. And doing that pressure, that Okazeme, that Oki as it were, Okazumi to some, that is a big part of this game for Potemkin because it's all about getting that knockdown. And he wants it so bad because once again in the end, this is what he's fishing for, right? And this is one of the ways he can get that command grab. So when it comes to the knockdown, there's a lot of ways you can get to the basic point. Uh, basic throw being actually one of the best options, period. And it's an option you're going to use a lot because, once again, it's his fastest move. And uh, it also does more damage than a basic throw for other characters, so that's awesome. Uh, but other things like you can go, you know, sweep, 
Uh, like anything in the sweep and the hammerfall, cancel hammerfall, and you're directly on top of them. Uh, a lot of things just in the hammerfall generally. As long as like not a full screen hammerfall cancel, you'll generally be on top of them and recover before them. And this is the basics of the guessing game. Layer one is simply this. You're on top of them. That's amazing. Congratulations. And you want to throw them. <laughs> that's like that's the best possible option. You want to do the big grab. That's layer one. Obviously, they don't want you to accomplish layer one, right? They're going to do everything possible to stop you from accomplishing that, right? So either they'll jump on wake up, they'll hit buttons on wake up. That's a pretty good way to take the initiative back, right? Uh, you can't throw someone immediately after wake up. You have to wait a frame or two. And generally speaking, anytime you try to wake, you just throw them when they're waking up. If they're hitting a button, they're going to beat you. As long as it's a fast enough button. If it's a slow button, not so much, right? But that's the thing. So, okay, we need to stop them from doing this crap, right? We need to keep them just blocking and tame. So no jumping out, no hidden buttons. So what do we do? So then this is the next layer, I guess. When we're on top of them, no matter how we get on top of them, once again, it could be a throw. It could be hammerfall cancel. We're on top of them, right? As long as we're on top of them, the next thing is just close slash. Because if they try to jump out or if they try to hit a button, but now that's what you eat for doing that. Same thing with jumps. Like right now, the enemy is set to block literally everything, right? But the thing about jumping is you can't jump and block at the same time on the first few frames. Once you're in the air, yeah, you can do it. But uh, until you're actively in the air, you cannot block. The first few frames of your jump, you cannot block in any way, shape, or form. So if I'm just going to toss out this button here, post slash, it'll stuff you attacking and it'll stuff you jumping. And of course, naturally, we, we can get a bit of a combo, right? So we can do this here. And then we'll do the old uh, Mega Fist Leapfrog. And that's substantial damage in and of itself, right? That's uh, around the same damage as the grab anyway. So we kind of win out either way. Either layer one, they just stand still for a second and you can grab them. And layer two is if they try to hit buttons or jump out. Uh, and once again here, they're set to jump immediately after they're knocked down. Then we just do something like close slash, uh, maybe down heavy slash, or it could be a uh, crouch slash, whatever you want it to be, right? Just buttons to quell them from doing that. Now, if that was it, that'd be pretty cut and dry, right? Like just a two layer guessing game. And you know, they might have a reversal or something. Keep in mind, you can command grab people out of their reversals, unless it's a super. So that removes that option actually. Like if Kai tries to uppercut out of this, your grab beats the uppercut anyway, so that's awesome. Uh, but layer three is the back dash. Because once again, back dashes are invincible in this game, right? So if I try to grab them, oh, they're out of dodge and they're too far away and they might be able to punch me. If I try to do that punch on wake up, depending on my timing, I might stuff it. But uh, on earlier timings, I won't stuff it, which sucks. So you have to kind of delay your thing a little bit. And the thing is, if you delay your thing a little bit to catch the back dash, that means they can jump and block. So you kind of lose out either way. And with the absolute fastest buttons, if you delay, the buttons will just actually beat you. So you need a way to reliably beat the back dash as well. So at this point, what we need then, like grab is always layer one. Sure, grab is fine. But if we have to guess between them waking up and hitting buttons, them waking up and jumping, or them waking up and back dashing, we need a move with what we call a lot of active frames. A move that just sticks out there for a long time. Like it's just active hence the active frames, on the screen for a very long time. So it'll catch the jump, it'll beat the move, right, because it's coming out first anyways, and it's just there long enough on the screen to catch that nasty old backdash. So now Kai is set to do those three things randomly. He's either going to backdash on wake up, uh, he'll either jab on wake up, or he'll jump on wake up. I have no idea which one's going to be which. Now here's the thing, if you want to catch all the options, you got to give up some damage, which sucks. But uh, them is the breaks, right? Except for the next session we'll talk about. Well, I don't, let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? Let's talk the basics first. So the two moves that have a lot of active frames for Temkin are far heavy slash. So not the close version, not that one, right? The one that's just further out. And sweet. They both have a lot of active frames. So it'll catch the back dash on top of the other options. Now, if you want to use those on the enemy's wake up, I don't even know what they're doing. It doesn't matter what they're doing. I kind of actually don't care. 
I'm always going to beat it. If it's going to be a jump, it'll hit him with regular hit. That was probably a punch, so I get a counter hit. And if it's a backdash, you'll just catch him just in the middle of the air, just backdashing, right? And you also have special moves you can cancel into as well, like off our sweep here. Like, uh, we can do a Mega Fist. If we caught him uh, waking up hitting a button, uh, it'll be a counter hit and we get a bigger combo. Uh, if we catch him backdashing, same deal. We can also do Garuda off the sweep. It'll scoop him off the ground. Or if we want to just do the Fire Slash thing, like, as you can see there, we caught the backdash. We didn't get a big reward. We didn't even get the heavy slash. They jumped or hit a button. We would have got heavy slash. But at least we have all the bases covered. Now, let's go to a much more attractive option here. So, screw just the regular wake up. Let's introduce the Garuda to all this. Okay, so now enter Garuda. So, we're going to talk all that Oki stuff we talked before. Except we're going to do Garuda. And it's going to crush all those three options, but better. So that was uh, them waking up with a button as a counter. You, you, you die. It's game over if you get countered with Garuda. It's already kind of game over if you get hit anyways, but especially if you get countered. And if they try to back... There you go. Perfect. They tried to backdash it once it gets set to random timing. I don't know which one's which. It has so many active frames. It is out there for longer than Stand Slash or the Sweep. It has more active frames. It's on the screen longer. So the backdash, it, it just has no chance against it. Like, I guess the best thing you can say about the backdash is you took the hit. And uh, maybe you gain some screen, but still, you got damaged. And here's the real beauty. Uh, I, know, I know it's already on your mind. Like, oh, you know, the wake up uppercut, right? That, that beats me. The thing is about the Garuda, it actually pulls him backwards, hurtbox wise. The part where you can hit Potemkin is further back than it looks. So, in this scenario where an uppercut's like an option on the table here, yeah, it can just whiff. You can just whiff. You only have to take a small step forward for the Garuda to connect, right? So that's fine. And in fact, if you do it a little meaty, well, then things get weird because it clashes with reversals. And if they go for the heavy reversal, you will recover first. Uh, don't do it too close right there. You, you got to give them a little space, right? But that's one of the weird little things about it. Now, if they do the small one, they recover first, so there's still the guessing game there, right? And you can just simply not do anything and bait on the reversal, but yeah, it's really, really, really strong. And what if they do the thing you wanted them to do all along? It's just stand still and freaking block! It's a guard crush! And uh, it's a guard crush that does a lot of chip damage, too, by the way. Like, look at that chip damage. That's, that's not nothing, right? So, it's a big guard crush. It cranks the risk gauge up pretty high, too, for what it does, which is great. That's more damage when you get your next actual hit. And uh, it's super, super, super plus. So then we're back in the loop, right? So it's super, super, super plus. So meaning when you block it, okay, guess what, buddy? Here comes the low. And it's the super active low. Like you want, wait a split second, then go for that. And it'll catch him jumping. It'll catch him hitting buns. It'll catch the back dash as we already went over. That was to establish this, right? You know, we're building up to the top. So that crushes all those options. And, uh, you know, then, you know, Mega Fist or another Garuda or whatever, right? That's awesome. Uh, and uh, then we get the, oh, you want the standstill option and keep blocking. Then that happens. So it's many layers of guessing game, right? You get the knockdown. Layer one is Garuda. And what happens from Garuda happens. Either it hits or it doesn't. Best case scenario is it hits counter hit. Then you can just clean their freaking clock. Holy crap, right? But on block, just as good, because now we're guest sweep, or we're guest the command grab. Uh, at a lot of ranges, you're going to have to do the Kara command grab, right? That I, You're going to have to practice it, I'm sorry, right? That's just how she goes. And uh, if you actually happen to come from, from very far away, the only option you're going to get is, like, the speed blue grab. But, man, that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. But, yeah, so, knock down pressure. I hope I have impressed this upon you enough is an incredibly important part of Potemkin's game. And your goal, other than landing the raw Potemkin Buster, is to knock them down and apply the just pressure and all the things you can use to dissuade them from doing anything so they block, so you can apply the Potemkin Buster. Okay, we spent the last couple sections building up Garuda, the big old cannon, right? On block. Now... On block, you got a little bit of a mix-up, uh, you know, a little bit of pressure. But what if we wanted to amplify that to the nth 
degree, right? What can we do then? Well, then that means we Garuda Impact, they block, and then let's Roman Cancel, baby. So however they blocked the Garuda Impact, it truly doesn't matter, as long as they blocked it. And we're going to do an incredibly late Roman Cancel here. Specifically, we're Roman Canceling when the gun goes away, basically when the move is over. If we Roman Cancel too early, it becomes the purple Roman Cancel. We do not want the purple Roman Cancel. We want the blue one. So wait for the gun to leave the screen fully, and then Roman Cancel. You'll still have a little bit of the Guard Break state left, and they'll be in the blue Roman Cancel clock, and that's exactly what we need. The purple one, it, it just doesn't work out the same way. We need the blue one. So Roman Cancel, like literally right when the move is over. And what we're doing here is we're taking our extended Guard Crush frame and the blue Roman Cancel to know that we will always go first. We are going to be there even with slow moves and we're going to be using slow moves. We're always going to go first. And then we have a bit of a mix up and it is a high low mix up as we'll be using our sweep and our regular non held version of the dust attack, which is an overhead. So this option here is going to be the low option. I know the combo turned blue, but it's an actual combo. We can't get out of it, right? And we get a good chunk of damage that's roughly comparable to what a Potemkin Buster would be. Uh, both these options will be. There's a little fancier combo. You can get to eke out a couple more points of damage, but that's the general gist of it, right? So that is roughly equivalent to a Potemkin Buster in damage. Great. That's our low option. So once again, we blue Roman canceled forward. From there, sweep, jab, into Heat Knuckle. That's all it was. Basic combo. We can do better, sure, but it's good damage either way. Now let's look at the overhead option. Also damage roughly comparable to Potemkin Buster, right? So the uh, blue Roman Cancel effect here basically gives us so much more time stop that the hit from the overhead, like we can get a bit of a combo afterwards, right? Normally never possible, but only possible because the blue Roman Cancel hit stun, like the time stop effect, puts them in so much more hit stun than normal, it allows us to combo from it. So once again here, you do your Garuda, wait for it to end, blue Roman Cancel in their face, and then either you do Dust Attack and then you get a full combo, or you do Sweep and you get a full combo. And of course, the ultimate of all mix-ups, once they're so obsessed with you know blocking one way or the other, is you do it and then you just Potemkin Buster them, right? <laughs> uh, because you can Potemkin Buster them almost right away afterwards. Just wait one split second and you get it anyways, right? So it's a very little devious mix-up and have fun with it. And finally, the last of our little tips is simply alternate inputs. Potemkin. He's a Potemkin Buster. Well, you might have heard of it. Might have said it like once or twice in this video, right? So it is half circle backwards, forward, and punch, right? And a lot of people come from a lot of other games. This is not, unless you come from King of Fighters, grabs aren't done this way, right? You come from Street Fighter, you come from Blaze Blue, you come from so many other games. It's the big 360 motion, right? And the secret is the game lets you cheat it. You can do the 360 motion and get a Potemkin Buster. So you can do it either way, like it's actually 270, right? But, uh, you know, start back, work your way to, uh, half circle forward to up or start forward, work your way half circle back to up either way. They are both valid inputs. The game will accept both of them. So if you struggle with that input at all, and there you go. And like legitimately me, personally, I can do it faster than the half circle back forward input. Like. I don't know times in milliseconds, but I know I can just do it faster. So if you're right beside the enemy, you might as well if that's just something for you. Uh, now to note, if you want to do the Carabuster, it has to be done the uh, correct way, the normal way, because you have to end with forward, right? Uh, so you can't end with a jump and get it. It's just not going to work that way. Uh, you can still get the, you know, the motion, sure, but it's not going to carry itself at all. Like you need to do it the proper way. But for all things other than the extended Carabuster range grab. You can just do this, and it works just like your Zangiefs, uh, your Iron Taggers, all that kind of stuff. And that, my friends, is Potemkin. He's a very cool character, a very fun character. Uh, if you like taking a little bit of a break in a match, right? Uh, he's your guy, because it's still a fast-paced game, but he has to play a slower game than everyone else, right? So if just go, 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 go isn't your pace, he's a good character for you. Uh, he's a bit simpler than other characters execute. Well, 
Actually, execution-wise, he's one of the most difficult characters in the game, but that is only for a very specific type of combo route. Uh, that is doing the uh, backwards-forwards Kara Mega Fist, uh, as uh, that adds some layers to his combo depth. Truly and honestly, though, you don't have to learn those. Uh, almost all the combos with Kara Mega Fist, they're only like a, like less than a jab's worth of damage more. Like sometimes it's usually like anywhere from like five to ten damage more. So it is more damage, right? Still, but it's, you don't have to break your back over it. But if you want that true mechanical depth, he has basically the hardest combo routes in the game, uh, execution-wise, in my opinion, anyways. But you don't have to. And if you don't want to worry about that, then he has like the easiest combo routes in the game, right? That kind of basic stuff hits like a truck. If you're looking for that grappler experience, that Zangief style experience, he's your only bet right now. Uh, there'll be plenty of DLC in the future. We'll see how it goes. I don't know who's coming. Uh, but as it stands, he is the only true proper grappler in the game. And if you want that, you want those big normals that dominate a lot of the screen. You want those lopsided matchups. Some matches he wins very easily. Uh, some characters struggle versus him, and he struggles really bad versus some other characters. So if you want that very polarizing experience, he is also your boy. But all things in the end, hey, that is the guide. So I hope I've taught you a few things about the character, how to use him correctly, a couple cool tricks, gimmicks, and gigaws, and all that kind of stuff. This guide was there for you. It's a very long guide. So uh, any likes, subscribes, all that kind of stuff, I would sincerely appreciate it, I'm not gonna lie. You can share it around, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, these videos take a very long time to make, so it'd just be appreciated. But anyways, I guess I'm just rambling at this point. So my friends, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Guilty Gear.